Hey guys, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D! I'm Zelda Master, and in this episode, we're gonna be taking on the Water Temple! Are you guys excited? Because, well, I kind of am. <laughs> uh, this temple is dreaded by many as the worst temple within any Zelda game because for some reason, it's really confusing to many people. I'll be honest, when I was younger, I was confused by it, but it's it's not that hard once you get the hang of it actually I'll, I'll try to make it look as easy as possible hopefully i can deliver with that but anyways once you do enter the water temple what you want to do is you want to head into this room now in the 3ds remake they make it obvious and show you that there's like a water level here allowing you to know that this room will lower the water level all the way to its lowest form also those glowing lights so it's just like head inside me i'm shiny and stuff so it makes it easier for the 3DS version, but in the N64, it's kind of hard, maybe. Um, but anyways, <gasps> as you can tell, someone's waiting for us. Who is this? Oh, snap. Is that Rudo? It's been seven years. So, oh, you, if I'm right, Link, you're Link, aren't you? It's me, your fiance, Rudo, Princess of Zoras. I never forgot the vows we made to each other seven years ago. You've, uh, a, you're, you, you're a terrible man to have kept me waiting for these seven long years, but now, since it's not the time to talk about love, I'm sure you have already seen it. Zora's domain, totally frozen, a young man named Sheik saved me from under the ice, but my father and the Zoras have not yet. I want to save them all. I want to save Zora's domain. You, you have helped me. This is a request from me, the woman who is going to be your wife, Link. You have to help me destroy the evil monster in the temple, okay? Inside the water temple, there are three places where you can change the water level. I'll lead you uh, the way. I'll lead the way. Follow me. Okay. So, yeah. Seven years sure have, I guess, done wonders for Rudo. She got cool-looking earrings, and she's an adult, but I don't know. Zoras aren't really my type. I don't really care that... I'm engaged somehow for getting the Zora Sapphire. I ain't marrying a Zora. I'm just saying. <laughs> but I find it funny how she still remembers. And Link is just like, oh, crap. Well, I don't really care. It's not that important. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to follow you. And, well, this is where things get a little uh, iffy and, and not uh, not the greatest. So, um, how this temple works is you're supposed to lower and and rise the water level back and forth and just keep changing the levels and it makes it really confusing it's not fun and there's a lot of keys you have to collect and then on top of that if you're playing the n64 version um it's not even the slightest of fun because uh what sucks a lot is the fact that you have to pause to equip your iron boots unlike in this game the iron boots are a normal weapon you don't have to like go to gear and put them on and that made it really annoying to take on the Water Temple within the N64 version. So for the 3DS remake, they changed it. They made the Iron Boots an item. We easily put, pop them on and off within seconds. So the Water Temple becomes so much easier, so much faster. And uh, it is, definitely. You can... It just feels so much better. So, yeah. Anyways, once you do get the dungeon map, jump back down here. Now that the water level is lowered... We can uh, investigate the lower floor and not have to worry about water. But you can either use dense fire or light the two torches while shooting arrows into them. And here we can actually pick up some more arrows. But let's go ahead and enter this door. We're going to find clams. Oh, no. All right. You kind of want to use hook shots when fighting these guys because, I mean, I highly suggest not wasting ammo on those enemies. They're not really much of an issue, but... Yeah, once you kill them, go ahead and open up this chest and pick up your very first small key. We're going to be getting a lot of them, we're going to be using a lot of them, and uh, it's going to make the temple a little annoying because you're going to have to be like, oh, I need to get this key, this key, this key. We're going to make sure to get them as soon as possible. Also, keep in mind that there are five gold skulltulas we have to look out for, just like, you know, the previous two temples. So, I'm going to make that also on my to-do list to make sure I get them because I never want to forget a skull fell within a temple and have to backtrack it's not fun to backtrack to temples but when you're underground your only way of combat or underwater rather <laughs> your only way of combat is using the hookshot so you want to use them on these enemies and such and hopefully they won't give you too much trouble but anyways here we are in this room we just took a stray 
left from the previous room. And now we are here where this dragon thing lies. It's a cool, like, dragon pillar that you can summon. Also, here I accidentally hit this switch. This switch opens up an area to where a ghost scuttle lies. This is pretty much all there is within this room. But it's worth it, of course. So there we go, we got ourselves a gold skull tile. Now I believe in the N64 version, the switch wasn't located behind this dragon pillar. It was actually inside this wall, or behind this gate. And you had to hit it with your sword, and the sword would clip through and actually activate it. I'm not too sure. If you have the N64 one in mind, let me know. I've been playing this one uh, ever since its release. So I don't remember too much if that was the case with the N64 version. But regardless, uh... You just want to hit a switch, so it doesn't really matter. Either either way, the, the games are, other than that, almost identical. Uh, yeah, there's not really much of a difference. So, after you get that, go ahead and start pushing this block here forward. And uh, by doing so, you'll be able to discover a new path to take on within the Water Temple. And so far, so good. We have not really tackled much of it, but... As long as we kind of explore each area we can, this is not going to give us trouble at all. So, yeah. All right, I'm going to try my best to make it look as easy as possible. So, because that's what I do. <laughs> but anyways, in this room here, I want to go ahead and hit this. Also, I love the music. Man, the music is uh, amazing for the Water Temple. It's really calm. It's really nice. Um, and I like it. It's just... It's something I would want to play when I'm just sitting in my room chilling. <laughs> I don't know why, it just is. It's just that type of music. But in this room, there's a really heavy current that's going to be pushing you around in circles. You want to put on your iron boots, make your way to this ledge, and then hit this switch on the dragon mouth. And it will open up this for a short period of time. So go ahead and make your way through here. And, well, you're going to find a secret chest where we can pick up a small key. Also, if you couldn't tell, there's another switch on the opposite side. This one will reopen up that gate. So we're going to go ahead and drop this. A bomb so it can give us time to quickly make our way past here. I'm going to ignore these freaking enemies because I'm not really in the mood. And then we shall swim our way out of here. Now that we have two keys, we're going to start using them. Let's go ahead and leave this room before the... Uh, door reshuts or whatever. But now, oh, okay, that was dumb. Also, my hookshot range is absolutely trash, so I have to be like really close to objects. Okay, hey, Tektite, no, 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 no. Stop it. Bad Tektite. Freaking hate him. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Now that we have killed that Tektite, we shall go ahead and uh, hook our way up here and well keep going on as you can tell i'm constantly putting on my iron boots on and off it's it's ridiculous but it's fine all right so the only area we haven't explored is this room over here that you instantly have to dive in the water at least on the third floor or the bottom floor but you can't do anything within that room until really later on within the temple so i'm just gonna ignore it and not show it off but once you get both small keys or at least two of them you can only get two so far. You want to go ahead and open up this door here in the center and start continuing on. Now, this room is also lit by some sort of light, indicating that there's another area that will change the flow of the water and kind of change the level. So this room here is going to make the level in the center. So kind of like on the second floor instead of the bottom and you're gonna be rising the water to that point. Um, and that's pretty much it. Like I said, this light source is only added within the 3DS version just to make the temple easier because I know Nintendo must have, you know, felt bad, I guess, for how bad the water temple was because everyone hated it. So yeah, that and the iron boots just literally made this temple a normal temple and super easy and fun and just, you know, happy-go-lucky times happen here. Not really, but it's just so much freaking easier. Anyways, by hitting the switch, we're going to have to fight a horde of enemies. Sadly, we have to use our freaking hookshot to kill them all. Now, it's kind of easy to kill all these guys with your hookshot. Just kind of lame how you have to use a hookshot to do it. I don't know. I'm not too big of a fan of just only using hookshot. I wish I could use my sword underwater. That would have been cool. But sadly, it's not able to be used within this game. But... 
This here is gonna lead you to another special key. Now we have again two keys on us and we're gonna go ahead and continue on with the two keys. So let's go ahead and head back to where the center room place is and start swimming up. Obviously we changed the water level to have it on the second level so things are going to be a little different for us and we're going to see exactly what we can do with it but let's go ahead and start swimming all about. Um, let's see so what I want to do is I want to head out of this room so that's what we're going to do first obviously if you, could, if you couldn't tell and then just go ahead and run your way I believe over here so we're just going to go ahead and hook shot like this and head inside this area where we're going to find <gasps> I believe the compass I think this is the only thing this leads you to but still it's worth it I guess because it's a compass and we're 100%ing the game so we want to get everything we can possibly get so yeah there you go the compass lies here just go ahead and hit the switch you got to be quick though because the stream of water is only gone for like a second and there you go the second I hit A on the chest instantly it went off so the water was gonna come back and it would have prevented us from opening up the chest but there we go we got ourselves the compass let's go ahead and jump down start backtracking now before I do anything else I need to pick up one more key because we need three before we even want to consider advancing so go ahead and jump back now that the water level is on the second level if we head back to where we first located Ruto uh, and start heading up since the water level is on the third level It's gonna stop us a little bit earlier and there's gonna be a secret we can pick up This is I think the biggest confusion within the temple a lot of people forget about this small key that lies beyond here Because um, it's really easy to forget you don't expect to backtrack when the water is at a different level But when it is and you do so you get yourself another key So yeah, it's gonna change the game up quite a bit and now we're on a really good track to completing this temple with ease so yeah so far it's so good now let's go ahead and swim back up to the surface where everything's on the second level and get scouting uh, I guess now what we should do is make our way to this room that is locked I just go ahead and show off the other sides yeah there's pretty much nothing else so we're gonna go ahead and unlock this door with the three keys we hold and let's see what's up so this one holds well you'll see in a second if you couldn't tell by the light <laughs> it's gonna hold something pretty interesting um anyways there's a tech that's gonna try to jump at you right here usually it responds sooner i know in the n64 version this gave me a lot of trouble but in this game it's not really much of an issue uh, you can easily head up that stream of water without worrying about the tech type falling on you because if it does fall on you you sometimes get pushed back and fall down but now we're gonna go ahead and rise the water level back up to the third floor or the highest level that it can be and we're gonna get busy with things so yeah so now that the water level is at its highest let's go ahead and well we're gonna be heading inside this locked door with the two keys we hold but before I do that I guess I'll will sh I will uh, I will show off what else is surrounding us uh, I believe this room here actually let's go ahead and just head here real quickly just so I can double check and make sure there is nothing else on my list of things to get so let's just go ahead and jump down I believe this room is going to be completely useless yeah there's a block can we actually push it now oh we can we can pull it which is good all right pull let's pull it now it's gonna make things easier for us don't worry we're gonna come back and uh, worry with this block like real soon and do its own puzzle but I'm gonna pull it now just to make things easier on us and you're gonna know when I come back to this block so yeah let's go ahead and hook our way back and now with the two small keys like I said open up the locked door that's on the highest level and get to it my friend so here we go this room is actually really stinking cool because it has platforms slowly rising up and you're gonna have to do some cool spider-man action to hook on all of them as soon as you can and you want to be quick with this because if you don't hook shot on one of these now oh shoot and the platform goes all the way up you have to like sit and wait for the platform to slowly go down so you can reach these uh, moving ones on the waterfall again if that made any sense Just, all you want to do is you want to quickly start hook shotting on these 
and then up. Okay, that was kind of stupid on my part, but there we go. We have made it, and we're gonna go ahead and use our second key to unlock this door. So yes, one locked door after another. That's why you need multiple keys. This room is super easy. There's not much to it. All you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be hitting the switch back and forth to rise these dragon pillars and lower them back and forth. It changes the water level, which changes the dragon pillars. So yeah, and that's honestly it. There's really nothing else to this. Uh, there's no puzzle. <laughs> Just keep rinse and repeating and you'll be golden. So let's go ahead and do this. Hit it again. I just highly suggest using an arrow for, for these guys because, I don't know, I don't really like, you know, trying to make sure I'm in range to use my hookshot because the hookshot just sucks in range. But don't worry, that will be fixed soon. Anyways, here's a like-like. Hook onto him. And then make your way to the other side instead of hooking up here and having him suck your blood. But let's go ahead and enter here. <laughs> 